Hey there, guys. Welcome to today's episode of the Dental Clinic podcast. Usually, I will be speaking to people that are well embedded in dentistry, and usually we're kind of used to seeing dentists, right? But one of the key aspects that I think a lot of us miss out on is the wider part of the management when it comes to a practice in itself, because just being a dentist isn't everything. Uh, we are very, very much dependent on our team that supports us. And obviously, running a clinic doesn't happen on itself, right? So we need to understand more about practice management and the rest of the dental team. So today, I am joined by a very special guest that kind of has a bit more knowledge on the dental team from a wider aspect, and obviously the management of the dental practice. So let me introduce you guys to Lemia Murray, who joins us today from the UK, and will give us a bit more background as to what it is or what it takes, should I say, to run a practice, and not only that, but actually to manage the team around the dentists as well. So, let me over to you. Do you want to just introduce yourself to the listeners, give us a bit more background about yourself? That'd be great. So, uh, I'm Lamia. Um, I'm 24 and I'm from Leicester. Um, I am a qualified dental nurse by trade, but I currently work as a practice manager for a corporate Riverdale Healthcare. Um, I manage a practice in Shepshed called Charmwood. Amazing stuff. So kind of your background, right? So you, you started there, as you said, as a, as a dental nurse. What was the journey for that? I mean, what do you need to do? How do you qualify as one of those? And what does the role entail when you're working as a dental nurse? So I started my journey over seven years ago as an apprentice dental nurse. So I was on the course for around just under two years. Um, training pretty much starts from day one. Um, I was very much chucked in at the deep end. For me, I'm a person who learns just by doing things. So I was quite happy to learn that way. Um, mm -hmm. Training is quite intense. Obviously, you've got to do the practical side of it, plus all of the coursework that back when I did my course was all at home. We didn't get study days. It was just a case of you do your work at work and then you crack on with your coursework and prep for exams at home. Um, yeah, it was really good fun for me. I started off in a fully private practice. Um, I was there for about a year, but then I, I wanted more experience with the NHS side. So I moved to a mixed practice where I finished my qualification. Amazing stuff. And then what do you typically do from the, on the nursing perspective? So we'll get into kind of the practice management side of stuff in a minute. But when you are a dental nurse, what does the job really kind of incorporate? What are, what are the sort of things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, what do you see daily? What are the highs and lows of being a dental nurse? So in terms of the job itself, it's very much being there with your clinician, assisting your clinicians through absolutely everything. You are their first point of call. You're there to help them with absolutely everything. As a dental nurse, you are doing everything but the treatment itself, from the setting up to patient notes to following the patient through their journey, being a support for the patient as well as the clinician. Um, it's a rewarding job, very much so. Very tiring, I will admit. Um, <laughs> running around after your clinicians is quite interesting. Um, but obviously, you see a lot from patients coming in, obviously, starting journeys such as Invisalign or, you know, if they've come in having extractions and then they've gone on to have dental implants, that's a journey in itself. Yes. Um, obviously, you get all types of patients walking through the door, very nervous patients as well. So, I think if you are going to be a dental nurse, it takes someone who's understanding and empathetic because the patient needs someone calming and they want to be in a relaxed environment. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that approach. I think one of the, the, the biggest issues I think that we see in the industry and by the general public is that the dentist is the be all and end all, right? People mm -hmm. kind of just look at the dentist and say, that's it. <laughs> we don't really give as much kudos as probably we should do to the rest of the dental team. That includes like, people that might be working on reception, yeah. um, you know, treat, treatment coordinators, the nurses, the list goes on, right? And there's so much that you guys are involved in. You quite rightly said that you pretty much do everything but the treatment itself. Yeah. How would you imagine, right, if, if a practice didn't have nurses? Could a practice really run without nurses? Or are you guys that important? Honestly, not saying this to be big-headed at all, but without the dental nurses, you haven't got a practice. <laughs> the nurses are probably the most vital part of the team they keep your practice running they keep the practice alive without your nurses you don't have instruments your clinical yeah. notes aren't going to be done 
your, your setup for your treatments aren't going to be ready. There's there's a lot that goes into it. Same with the reception team, you know, without a front of house, <laughs> no patients. Yeah, exactly. No <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think this like this 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 is kind of another reason I wanted to get you on today as well, is to give a bit more limelight to the rest mm -hmm. of the dental team because really and truly I think we get lost into this you know, the sparkly idea of just saying that the dentist is a great life, yeah. but really and truly dentists are nothing without that team. Right. <laughs> and I've, I've witnessed it even when I've shadowed dentists, nurses are everything. Like they really do. You know, as you said, the setup is so important when it comes to kind of keeping a sterile environment or a close to sterile environment, you guys are, are top notch in understanding that and repeating that with each patient to ensure that there is a health and safety aspect but then obviously the notes, which are so important to a dentist. I mean, you can kind of be struck off right from the register as a dentist if your notes aren't in check. So you guys are just on the ball with it. And without you being involved, it's kind of like, you know, where are the dentists going to go? Right. So really important. I think, again, one thing you mentioned there for anybody who's interested in dental nursing, the empathy aspect of it, you really do have to have that. It's almost kind of something inbuilt into nurses, right? They need to look after the patients, they need to look after the dental team, they need to look after the dentist and their well-being mentally as well. There's so much that you guys have to have to kind of manage. Uh, you know, what are the tips there you'd give to people in terms of being able to manage not only your job, but then the mental health of all of those that are working around you as well? I think outside of work, taking the time for yourself, doing things that you really enjoy. Like for me, gym is a really big part of my life. Um, yeah. Not only is it good for you physically, but mentally as well. For me, I go first thing in the morning, so it gears me up for the day. Perfect. Very energy, full of positivity. So yeah, just making sure that you have got other hobbies and interests outside of work. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> <laughs> now it's good, good to know. I think uh, even, even as a student at the moment, like I've just literally today, I've actually just joined the gym here locally. Um, it, it does change the game. Like just to have an outlet, you need it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to know now, and I think everybody else is interested to know, how did you then transition from nursing to where you are now? Were there a few steps in the way? Did something inspire you? Did somebody come across and say, hey, have you considered this? Or was it always the goal? What was, you know, tell, tell us first and foremost, what, what are you kind of putting most of your efforts into now? And, and how did you get there? So basically, I actually wanted to be a dentist slash orthodontist, mm -hmm. purely because of what I'd been through as a child. I had some some dental trauma um i then went through the whole having braces i had to have a root canal because i had an accident as a child and i think from there i was just absolutely fascinated with in a weird way teeth uh you don't right. hear many people say that at all no. <laughs> i think where i am obviously empathetic towards people i love helping people just daily in general life i thought this could be something i could be good at um uh, i then got into it obviously through my dental nursing apprenticeship to get my foot in the door that way to see if that was still what I wanted to do. Um, after doing the apprenticeship, clinical wasn't something that I wanted to do long term. I always right. sort of then thought I quite like the look of the TCO, the PM roles, the more admin side, the more non-clinical side. So right. that's what I did. I absolutely did everything in my power to make sure that I got here. Um, so once I did my dental nursing qualification, I then moved on to the more non-clinical roles such as reception as well as nursing. So sort of a split role. Yep. Um, I then pushed for the TCO role, um, which I managed to get into at an orthodontic practice that was based in Nottingham. Again, another rewarding sort of role, you know, patients that are coming in to see you for the private cosmetic treatments that want to be there. They want to start a journey with you as the TCO so it's really nice to take patients along that journey with yourself and then from there I, I just knew this was what I wanted to get into so it's just all about not giving up and just keep pushing and that's what I did I was absolutely relentless with it and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so just for anybody who's who's listening and isn't familiar with the term TCO do you want to walk them through what that is as well? Yeah, so TCO is a treatment coordinator. So you are basically there to help take away time from dentists. Mm -hmm. So sort of doing free consultations, talking to patients about your cosmetic treatments, such as your Invisalign, your teeth whitening, your fixed orthodontics, dental implants, private dentures, things like that. Um, taking your iTero scans, doing your OPGs if you are qualified. Um, I did my radiography, so I was luckily enough 
able to do that. Um, going through your treatment planning, going through the financing, literally doing all of those things to take away time from both the front of house yep. and the dentist as well, so that they can focus on what they need to do. The dentist has more time to be spent on the treatments and so forth. So as a TCO, it's very much a behind the scenes kind of role, but you do play a huge part within that patient journey. I think that's quite interesting. Actually, I didn't actually know that you could kind of level up your skill set as well while you're doing all of this, as you said, you know, with the radiography side of things. I'm guessing you did a few more additional courses within that. So anybody who's listening can understand that actually it's not just as simple as just, you know, admin, as you've put it, but there's more and you can add more strings to your bow as you go along, right? So I think you can have a good blend of admin and that clinical side of things without kind of committing too heavy to one, right? Yeah. Um, that's that's super interesting. I mean, one thing that you've mentioned there was the reception side of thing, right? Now, again, I feel like people undervalue this massively, but that is kind of the mouthpiece of any dental practice because yeah. <laughs> without front of house, as you quite rightly said at the beginning, you've got no dentistry, right? Because no one's walking <laughs> through the door. You've got no patients. What's that like? Because I guess you, you, you probably have to deal with the complaints. You probably have to deal with disgruntled patients. You've got to deal with the pay payments that come in because obviously the dentist just kind of says, thanks, Mrs. Smith. I've done your teeth. Now hop on out and deal with the pay payment outside. You've got to deal with all of these like critical and sensitive things, right? So how stressful is that? How do you deal with that as well? Um, I would definitely say being a receptionist is probably one of the most stressful roles within the dental practice. Um, you are the first and last people that the patients see. So you are the messenger. And if you are delivering bad news, they will come at you like there's no tomorrow. Um, but you've, you've got to have a thick skin and it's just knowing that it's not personal towards you um, and just standing your ground with it but not arguing with the patient and just making them aware look this is how the practice works this is the policy either take it or don't <laughs> <laughs> take it or leave it yeah i think i think that's something that i've kind of only just come to get to grips with recently how important front of house is because again i think as, as, a, as a layman, we all kind of just think, ah, receptionist, they just, they got an easy life, right? Just sit there and, you know, nice and <laughs> stress-free. They just walk in and say, your appointment's at one o'clock, your appointment's at two o'clock and that's it. But it's so much more difficult than that. I think that interaction that you have with people, positive and negative, yeah. can really shape how your kind of your day goes and how your week goes. So keeping firm and having that strong mental side of things is so important. But I think it's just crazy to hear from you. Like you've done so much. Which <laughs> would you say, which would you say is kind of, the most you what's what's the, the the role that really suits you out the 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 plethora of different ones that you've done so far I don't know I feel like I've enjoyed every single one of them um I think obviously I enjoyed being a dental nurse when I was a dental nurse because it was something completely new to me it was really fascinating at the time because I'd never done like all these different treatments before like <laughs> Yeah, and then obviously moving on to reception was good because I feel like I get on really well with people. I am a yeah. people person, but that's what inspired me to also do the TCO role, being involved in the patient journey, talking mm -hmm. to patients all day, every day. That was my job. Um, whereas now I am very much in an office <laughs> on my own, but I do still have that patient interaction it might not be the best of yeah, yeah. interactions but yeah it's still it's still there and plus all of my members of staff they know they can always come and talk to me if and when as and when they have any problems but even just to have a five minute chat outside of surgery <laughs> that's actually that's actually quite interesting let's let's bring you on to that point actually so you're you're just to, to clarify you're a practice manager now right for a for a corporate so if anybody who's listening is trying to understand that uh the way the structure of how private entities work even nhs actually so we have people that can kind of own a practice like a singular practice this is usually just like a, a mr smith or a dr smith who might have that one practice they might have two or three or four but then we have private entities out there that will own loads at a time right and we call them corporates which is a bit of a scary word in my opinion i think we need to kind of get rid of that word to be fair with you it sounds so businessy but we have these corporate entities that will own quite a few uh, different practices in different locations within the UK. Now, the corporate that you're working with at the moment, they were, sorry, Riverdale, you said it was, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Um, and within that, 
the one that you're at you're in Leicester at the moment again yeah, just, just yeah. to clarify right yeah. so how did you kind of then transition from this clinical role or should I say clinical role into a re- more of a, an admin role into back into sort of a clinical role and then back out into an admin role how did you get yourself into practice management because that's a big step um so I started my PM journey literally a year ago it's just a case of literally putting yourself out there and just telling people what you have to offer Mm -hmm. um confidence is definitely a big thing and just knowing that you are able to achieve what you say to these practices when you are going for these interviews um but it's yeah it's just having that belief in yourself obviously when you are going for these interviews they can see straight through you yeah and so as long as you can (laughs) deliver on what you're saying it should be fine yeah right so and then obviously i'm guessing that personality as well oh personality yeah of course i think i think that your personality definitely shines through i was just about to say do you think that the experience that you had with speaking to people at front of house and then obviously as a dental nurse tco all of that human interaction that you had do you do you think that helps you during these interview processes as well yeah i would say so um it's definitely helped me along the way. Like if you asked me this like seven years ago, I would have been really shy. I wouldn't have put myself out there. But yeah, when you work in this industry, you have to face people. So you just mm. build it up over time. And, and what would you say to those more introverted people that are thinking of walking this like dental path, whether that's as a dentist, whether that's as a nurse, practice manager, uh, you know, all of these aspects have a, a human approach to them, but there are so many introverted people that still want to tread that path what's the advice you'd give them I think just don't be afraid to put yourself out there again have that self-belief have that self-confidence and reach out to people like you know LinkedIn is a great place there's so many people that you can meet on there reach out to and just ask for the advice and people will honestly give it to you I'm with you. That's 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 how we connected. So <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. So you know, as as a as a practice manager now, right? So this is kind of getting into the nitty gritty of of this talk in itself because I'm super interested in this part as well. <laughs> how the hell do you deal with it? You got people from such different backgrounds, right? Because you're dealing with every staff member. That goes from people that are as you you know all the all the positions that you've worked in through to the dentist, through to the specialists, whatever it might be, any locums that might be coming in and out and you know, are you then also involved with equipment or, you know, procuring certain materials for the, the clinic in itself? There's so much that you've got to deal with, right? First of all, how the hell do you do it, right? And then we'll kind of get into the, the, the nitty gritty of it. So I'll, I'll let you start off with that. Um, Definitely patience is key. <laughs> um, staff management is probably the hardest part of being a practice manager because you've got to try and keep almost everyone happy at the same time now it is an impossible thing to keep every single person in the practice happy at the same time but you can literally do your best by it um it's just killing everyone with kindness every single day just checking up on no seriously just checking up on everyone making sure everything's okay they just want to know that you are there, you know, you're going to be there for them, just making sure that they can come to you. They feel comfortable being around you. And you've you've got to have that open door for your staff. Otherwise, without mm. if you don't have your staff on side, you don't have a, a functioning practice at the end of the day. I'm with you. And, and how do you deal with, like, for example, absences or last minute people not showing up with, you know, within the staff, I mean? Do, are you dealing with, uh, you know, finding locums, for example? Is that something that you would have to deal with or is that someone else that manages that? Yeah, me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've, I've always been told, right, stay away from practice ownership because in the early stages, usually practice owners are practice managers as well, right, in the early stages. And they always say, oh, because, you know, if you've got someone that doesn't turn up, what are you going to do? Do you know how hard it is to find a locum? So give us give us your advice and your experiences when it comes to managing that, because that can be very last minute, right? Yeah, I think it's just also having like your right policies in place. So like our sickness policy is they have to phone by a certain time in the morning. Yeah. Obviously, if that time has passed in the morning and then you are either dropping me a text or phoning me after this certain time it's going to go down as an unauthorized absence Mm -hmm. the team know where they stand when it comes to this thankfully touch wood my team are really good and they will come in even if they aren't feeling the best 
Um, Maybe in rare cases where they absolutely can't make it to work, which is absolutely fair enough. Nobody wants to be at work when they're not feeling 100%. But yeah, I think it's also when that does happen, just not showing the team, oh, this is really annoying or anything like that. Just, okay, hope you feel better soon. And then just finding a solution from there. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot of resilience. But I think one of the key things there that you said is, you know, it, it kind of just actually fits in from good communication from the start, right? So you said yeah. that earlier, how, you know, you kill them with kindness, you've had an open door policy, all these things. I guess then the result of this is that people are, I guess, more hesitant to let you down, right? So it's all about that relationship building, that communication. That's awesome stuff. Uh, what about when it comes to, you know, equipment or materials or that kind of, you've got so much on your head to deal with. I mean, you know, what's that route look like? To be honest, with equipment, as long as you're having the proper maintenance checks and servicing done regularly, it's rare that things will go wrong. Mm. Um, if things do go wrong in my practice, I'm quite lucky that the, the maintenance people that we do use can usually get within the practice sort of for 24, 48 hours. Nice. Um, if it is urgent and they still can't make it, they'll give us advice on what to do, what not to do with that certain piece of equipment whilst we're waiting for them to come out so if it's something i can fix in house again as a practice manager you become a handyman as well <laughs> so i'll try and fix it but if i can't then i will just contact the maintenance people <laughs> uh, you don't you don't get paid extra for it but you're still trying right. so it's a fair fair play <laughs> to you and and you know let, let's give some tips and tricks to those that are entering the world of dentistry at whatever like you know career path it might be right <clears throat> From from your perspective, when you are recruiting people, what are you looking for? What are the key things you're looking for so that anybody listening can kind of incorporate that into their CV or their approach to interviews, etc.? What are your top tips? Um, definitely positivity, someone with an open mind and someone who has that drive and ambition and is wanting to help take the practice and just fly with it, basically. And any red flags? What would you say are the things that they could they could look great? But the second that you hear that thing, you're like, right, I'm turned off. This is not happening. I think it's just having the negative approach to work. Um, not being open minded, I think, is a really big thing for me. I can't have closed minded people on the team or, you know, if you have an idea and then straight away, you know, they don't want to know or no, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, no, it will work, but we've just got to put in the work and give it time. So, yeah, just closed mindedness is a big no, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good Good to hear because usually I think people associate kind of corporates with being financially driven, target driven only, uh, and that's it. But to, to see that, you know, they have gone on and recruited a, a practice manager such as yourself that is open-minded and wants staff that sing on the same hymn sheet, right? It's good to see that we're kind of breaking down that stereotype of of corporates as a whole. There's people like, their, like yourself out there that are willing to apply their kind of way of working and way of thinking and recruiting the right kind of people that might fit into that same mindset so it's really awesome to see i think it's it's good for me as well. i'm thinking in my head okay cool in a couple of years i might be able to bump into somebody like yourself when it comes to recruiting me as a dentist fingers crossed um and then kind of you know for yourself in, in, in your own personal journey what's what's the the next you know few years and the future looking like for yourself definitely growing within the business so definitely looking at things like area management or nice. So we have someone within the business who is a trading director. So she looks after all things private. So I would quite like to also work with her. Mm -hmm. um, maybe do sort of practice visits within the company, help them with boosting their private sales, but also help them with their sort of compliance and practice management and things like that. So if I could have like a, a mix of both the area management, but also helping practices with developing their private i think that'd be really good that's that's really cool i think to hear that anybody out there who's kind of thinking that dentistry is just opening people's mouths up and oh. looking inside them and that's it that's this so is the, cool. yeah it's really eye-opening even for me i'm sort of sitting here saying wow this is like you know we're moving from the clinical side into you know interpersonal into admin into equipment there's you know so much there and there's a huge it seems like career progression and scope for moving into different directions within this it's yeah. mind-blowing so that's, that's that's amazing stuff you know your last sort of advice to anybody out there listening um who's considering you know either be it 
uh, dental nursing, either be it working in the reception team or TCO or practice management. Let's let's steer away from dentists entirely today, right? Because we give them too much on this podcast, <laughs> and I think everybody does everywhere else, right? Focusing on those within the dental team, what is the advice you'd give to those that are looking to get into that line of work? Um, just don't give up. Be consistent with it. That's what I literally did. Um, go the extra mile. Like for me, yes, you don't get paid for putting in the extra hours, but if you show that you are dedicated, you know, you have this drive and ambition, people will see this. They'll see how hungry you are. And most importantly, staying humble with it. <laughs> That's it. I like that. I like that. So great way to wrap it all up. If <laughs> anybody's kind of interested in uh, getting in contact with you, is there any way that they can do that? Yeah, definitely. So I've got an Instagram page dedicated to dentistry and my work. So it's called Dental and Me. I'm hoping that's also something that I can really push in the future. I'd love to, you know, host like seminars, be at these dental events, coach and develop other sort of dental care professionals that are wanting to have the same career progression that I've been so lucky to have. Okay, and then I will make sure that I kind of leave that in the description box below. <laughs> and if anybody can or does reach out to you and if they want to share their stories, they can do here on the channel. I think it's just been an amazingly different and refreshing <laughs> kind of episode to have you on. Uh, and genuinely, I feel like I've, I've learned a lot as well. So I'm hoping those that are listening have taken a lot from this as much as maybe I have. And uh, once again, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. The media has been nice enough to say that, you know, if you want to get in touch, you can do. I'm hoping that we can all touch base again in the near future. So, guys, thanks once again. Lamia, thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>